Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a video. So in the comment section of the Dave Sim video that I posted talking about um, black and white comics, uh, someone recommended um, Chronicles of Hate by Adrian Smith. I'd not seen this book, but I'm actually a fan of Adrian Smith's art. And uh, I checked it out and I thought it was really, really interesting and very, very cool looking. Very, very dark art. It's it's like if you're a fan of like video game sort of way over the top um, fantasy mixed with horror and huge Lord of the Rings type wars, this is definitely going to be up your alley. This is some crazy, crazy stuff. So let's just get right into it. We don't really necessarily need to go in order. So this is there's two series. Um, one was released in 2014, one was released in 2016. This is the follow-up, book two. Um, so this was the 2016 one. Um, I could have picked either, but this is good. So there, there will be some spoilers. I don't go to the end of the story, but you'll get to see maybe about a quarter of the art from the issue. So really, really cool cover. This character is really trippy. Um <laughs> For a lot of reasons, but um, yeah, you'll see as we go along. Like, I'm not 100% sure he has legs. They're they're always kind of hidden by these um, this like sc skull, um, kind of a kilt skirt thing that he wears. But there's times where he's like, I'm not I'm not convinced that he has legs. He might kind of float with this sort of creepy thing under him. He may have legs. I don't know. All right, so this is part of the war. This is crazy, crazy sequence with the war. Um, this is very loose, this particular piece, um, but not not all of it gets this sort of abstract because this is very, like, almost, it almost looks unfinished. But I think he's kind of trying to show the mayhem of the war, but this almost looks like an underpainting, to be honest. Um, this is done digitally, and I've talked about before how I'm a huge, huge fan of concept art, and in particular, digitally painted stuff. So as much as I probably lean for comic art to traditional work over any other medium even um, traditionally painted i like pen and ink you know pencils inked traditionally then color digitally um i've always wondered what a really really good concept artist could do in terms of a painted graphic novel and although this isn't in color um uh this is you know along the lines of that so you can let me know what you think if it's successful or not um in the comment section i'd be curious what you think but um yeah it's interesting um he doesn't have panel borders on these pages i mean the panel borders are basically just the edges of the thing he he has one advantage i actually shot a video of this yesterday and was not really that satisfied with it so i, I figured i'd come in fresh today and try it again um, one advantage that he has working this way is the fact that he's able to use gray so much and also the painted quality because as a traditional artist, very, very difficult to achieve some of the effects that he gets with this approach. You'll see it more in some of these war sequences and I'll explain why, but there's a lot of shape language going on here and with the digital tools like the different brushes and stuff like that. You can put down a lot of information really quickly where with um, uh, pencil and ink, you you are dealing with a lot of little um, a lot of little details that can be very, very time consuming to put in. And on top of it, how do you create separation? I'll give you an example really quick, although this I'm going to turn this gray, even though it's a gray file, but I think I, I don't think it's grayscale. Um, I'm gonna do this really quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna remove the brightest gray, one of the brightest grays, and then I'm gonna darken this. Because essentially, when you're when you're working traditionally, what you end up having is black, white, and gray. And the gray is created by like line work. But you see what I'm saying? It like like and this actually looks really cool. But how would you how would you render all this stuff in the background with lines and have it fall back that far? You could do a knockout. I mean, you could have it jet black, where this stuff is black, and then your colorist just knows to take don't ignore how black everything else got. But you could go in with with dark there and then have the colorist knock it out. But even that's pretty powerful, to be honest. I love this. It actually looks very cool. This panel right here with just the jet black. It's kind of got a Frank Miller thing. <laughs> this is cool speaking of frank miller but yeah i thought that this was it was fun and very very different 
Um, it, it's interesting when he did it too, because so again, 2014, 2016. Uh, as a big fan of concept art, one thing that I always heard many, many concept artists um, saying their dream was, and a lot of them had a lot of promo art that they would show from it, was a lot of them wanted to do comics. That was not uncommon in the mid, well, like 2010, 2012, for a lot of them to, to be working for a video game company or whatever, movies, and all of them wanted to do a graphic novel, and that was like the big goal of everyone, and very few did it. A lot of them had very cool concepts for games, I mean, um, graphic novels, and a lot of them had some very, very cool promo pieces, but unfortunately, most of them never came to pass, but this one did, you know, so it's pretty cool, you know, tip my hat to Adrian for having the um, the commitment and the, the energy to be able to do it, because this is not easy. This is a lot of work. This is really, really cool. And I apologize for the lack of updates on Blaster Kid the last two weeks. We had um, a house, like a house emergency. <laughs> and I've had r workers here repairing stuff. It broke again last night. I was able to fix it this morning. But um, yeah, it's been kind of going back and forth, but it's been really um, distracting. It's been expensive and uh, frustrating. But uh, that's the only reason that I haven't been updating more is... Uh, I've been dealing with that all during the day and, and it's been hard to work because they're literally right outside my window. It's been hard to shoot videos actually too. I thought I thought for sure they were gonna have to come today, but luckily I got this thing fixed this morning. I thought we were gonna be in for another thousand bucks. <laughs> this is awesome. Really, really cool. This guy's so crazy looking. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> He's kind of like the hunchback of Notre Dame or uh I, there's another character in something that I had seen that kind of reminded me of him. There's a really funny shot that he did of this thing and I don't know if it's going to be in this or if it was in the first one. But you know the 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 there's that photo meme of the little girl in the yellow jacket running with like the ice cream cone or whatever they put in her hand. He he used that for this character in a panel and it had to have been intentional, but it's so funny but he's running and um he's it's totally it's totally that shot. He's down here in the corner. We'll see if it if, if if I have it open here. It could have been in the first issue. I don't even remember, but I saw it yesterday. I was laughing, but but there's no doubt in my mind that it was a nod to that. This is pretty cool. And again, I mean, this is where um, doing it um, with digital painting, man. I don't even know what you would do. I mean, I, I guess side of the pencil. That was the other thing I was thinking about when I was looking at this stuff is because the thing is, is I could I could do finished pencils over this. If I took this and use this as like my thumbnail, I mean, I could definitely literally go in and render all of this and draw every single thing and flush out a lot of the details and stuff like that. But it's like, where do you stop? Because, I mean, I could sit and draw this tree for seven hours and have it all looking like a Bernie Wrightson piece or whatever. But, um, you know... It would be really, really time consuming, but he gets a lot of information down with these different um, brushes. I have this exact brush too. It's funny, I know exactly in Photoshop which brush this is, or something that looks gets the same exact effect. He gets some really, really nice 3D effects. In fact, this might have been the one that I pointed out yesterday. Um, this right here, this button or whatever you call it, like piece of armor right here, the way he lit it is great. So he's got this beautiful up light coming and it really hits like the rim of this right here. He's got a nice mid-tone on this and then that cast shadow above it, man, it just really, really pops and looks very 3D. It's a really beautiful effect he got with that. This is nice. And thank you for all the nice compliments. I've been getting some really genuinely like nice uh, feedback in the comments section about um, you know the insight that I give in these videos. You know, I I I've been doing this longer than most of the people on YouTube that are that do comic book stuff. Not all, but many. And I came at it just from my own angle, which is I'm just into art and I like to look at art. 
And so this channel evolved pretty naturally for people that are finding it now and don't understand why do it or what the motives are. But, um, you know, with that, um, I think I've created a unique approach to it. It definitely seems like inside baseball because it doesn't appeal to, to the masses. A normal person doesn't really give a shit about probably some of the minutiae that I'll get into with, with the actual techniques. This is a little hard to read. I guess... Oh, it's the... I see what it is. So this is like a bucket or something above him. This is that guy's backpack. So it's the little weird guy. But this is really hard to read also. I guess this is some creepy demon with its arms out like a saucer. That's interesting. Oh, this is cool. This reminded me of something from a movie. I couldn't I couldn't completely nail it. I was almost thinking it was the movie with Johnny Depp. Uh when he is like the Indian, the black and white movie, but I don't think it is. But it was kind of like that. Is that a beetle or is it someone mowing? I hear like a weird buzzing sound outside. I think it's um like a weed whacker. It's just far enough away that it sounds like a bug, but it's small but close. This is great, man. Oh, it's so beautiful. Man, that's awesome too. Oh, that's a really cool shot also. <laughs> I didn't see this page yesterday. Man, this is a banger. I love the sense of scale and everything. Uh, Adrian's so good. I picked up I picked up a book of his. I don't have it in my office right now, but I got something of his, um, like within the last year, because based on um, uh, a recommendation from YouTube, actually in the comments section, this is nice. That's cool too. <laughs> This guy has to run from a lot of stuff. I've definitely noticed it's a theme in the book that he's he's like he's in a tough situation and is like a little this is almost similar to the other post. It's almost like he reused it. It's not the shot that I was thinking of, but it's very, very close to the other one. The oh, this is so good. Look at that. I love the way that he painted the backpack here. This is just so killer. This is all great, too. This is really nice. Great scene. Oh, yeah, this. All the, the, the hordes of them coming through the mountain pass is great. The size, the scale of it was a little weird. I know that these guys are really big, but it's it's like this feels... What, what's, what makes it odd for me is... The, these look like they would be bigger mountains, and then the height of the 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 army down here seems too tall. Like the the figures are too big. It would it would almost benefit him, I think, if he pulled the mountain or like these ridges up a little bit. I mean, it could be a valley where these aren't like super high. Maybe they're just like a thousand feet tall. But these characters down here seem too big, unless they're like fifty feet tall, which they could be. Maybe this is way, way off the ground. But yeah, the scale over here kind of was throwing it off for me a little. But This was a really interesting shot. So this is like super, super creepy. We've got this like sea of like skull heads. Mr. Skull head skirt wearing guy without his helmet on. And then uh, all the these guys. I don't know if they call that crucified or what this technically is called. <laughs> It's, I guess it's not crucified because their arms aren't out in a Jesus Christ pose. Um, but uh, this is pretty cool. This is really cool. Man, this is great. These three panels are awesome. Oh, yeah, I remember this from yesterday. I really like this area right here a lot. Oops, sorry. My, I used the wrong side of my... Uh, Pen. This right here is really cool. I don't know what it is. I, I like the, the trunks of the trees. And then this all looks really nice. 
And then these three panels really work good together. This this is really, really good, too. And really great value control through here. Very, very clear page. You know what I mean? Like, he really, really was able to manage the um, gray. This is cool. Here, this guy's running again. Running and running and running and running. Now he's got a wolf chasing him. Oh, that's cool. Damn, what a great sequence. Yeah, that's great. I thought this was kind of interesting just because it's it's one of the lighter pages. Kind of a cool down shot. Look at this. We're going full full screen mode. Awesome. And we're getting towards the end here. So, all right. So that's Adrian Smith. This book is awesome. It's really, really good. So if you're into this kind of thing, this might be a thing you would like. <laughs> and there's two full books of it. They're big books, too. They look like they're about 60 pages. So Chronicles of Hate... Book two is what we looked at in this one by Top Cow. Amazingly enough, it's um, kind of crazy to think that Top Cow would publish this. It seems like almost maybe not commercial enough for, for their thing. Here's the credits. So Adrian wrote and drew it. But uh, yeah, really, really cool, man. So all right, you guys have a great day. Go out and do great things and... Uh, check out the new Wolfgang Van Halen song today. It's actually pretty good. Sounds like he's been listening to Queens of the Stone Age and Foo Fighters meets My Chemical Romance. <laughs> but I think it's just his sound. That's not really that literal. Okay, later. Bye.